J.F. Stratford Paddock. This is Paddock Live and we're here. It's a Paddock Podcast. Oh, is it the Paddock Podcast? Yes, Well, mate. I got that one wrong straight from the start, didn't I? I'm so excited because we're in Melbourne. Joining me, as always, is Mr. Joe Smith. How are we doing? I'm doing really well. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm all right. Not too bad. Just a bit cold. It's a bit cold here in Australia. I wasn't expecting it. It's pathetic, isn't it? It is pathetic, oh, actually. Come to Australia. It's always hot in Australia. I'm getting pictures and stuff of people in the sun back home. Yeah. Kids are out in the paddling Rocking pool. around in shorts and paddling pools and 38 degree weather. 38 degrees. That's about Sometimes as hot as I've ever seen hot, it. Isn't it. That is yeah. probably too hot. I mean, come on, I like it warm, but it's too warm for me. Maka, what's happening? Not a lot. Not a lot. You enjoying it here, other than the cold? Yeah, I have been enjoying it here. Melbourne's a very great city, I think. It's a nice it is, city, isn't it? It's a it lot is. to do. Lots to do. A lot Busy. going on. Do you know loads I mean? of different kind of foods. There is loads of different kind of foods, but we just keep going to Chinatown to eat, which is a bit Yeah, you weird. can't go wrong, can you? No. Unless you don't cook your food properly. That's <laughs> we'll, talk about, we'll talk about that in yeah. a little bit. Uh, get involved in the chat and the comments, as always, because this is live. We're also going to be talking about Lisandro Martinez, the yeah. new Manchester United defender. Five foot nine, a pure defensive genius. I was yeah. going to say, are we going to mention his height? And you've already answered that question. Yeah, because he's a genius. Because yeah. everyone is talking about the fact that he's going to be the smallest centre back in the Premier what, League next season. What they've apparently. done is they've compressed all of the effort and energy and talent of a six foot eight centre back right. like a diamond into yeah. a six five foot nine one. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You can I have mean, loads of coal, but one diamond is worth way more. And we've seen him pocket frauds like Erling Haaland yeah. before. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely put him in his pocket. It's all about your reading of the game these days. Mm. It's all about your technical ability. Who plays hoofball anymore? Burnley have effed off. Yeah. Do you no. know what I mean? Yeah, no. exactly. No. Even like Crystal mean. Palace. They've got Vieira trying to make them play like good, proper football. Yeah, kind of don't have to worry about like, crosses yeah. anymore. Crosses don't exist. That's and it. plus, are, are any crosses going to get into the box when you've got it. people like Terrell Malassia yeah, exactly. left back? He's not going to let anyone everything. cross, is he? Do you know what I mean? Not a chance, mate. So we don't need to worry about that at all. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you know about him as well because a lot of people, other than his height, don't seem to know a lot about him. And his, his nickname, nickname is... Is it The Butcher? The Butcher. Pat Butcher. Pat Butcher. His Who's named your favourite Butcher? Yeah. Is it Pat? Well, Frank, Frank, Frank was Frank a legend, Italy. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Frank, Frank was it. Yeah. What was that? Oh, I love. Mm. And he had the oh. spinning bow tie on. Yeah. Remember that? That hey. was good. That. My Do favorite butcher is the one who works up, and their slogan is, uh, "Pleased to meet you, meet to please you," which is quite a nice little slogan. Isn't ah, it? right. Yeah. You know get it. Yeah. <laughs> the old the, 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 the old switcheroony there with yeah. the old meat. Mm. So it's M E E T and M. That sounds sexual. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, doesn't it? I might use that as my slogan. Is your when I get old. When I get back home, what are you going to say to people? See the lady, yeah. friend. Yeah. Meet to please you. <laughs> <laughs> Should we get into the Sandra Mark quickly? Quick show. Get uh, yeah, let's go on then. So we've got, a few, a, we've got a few uh, quotes from Ten Hag who's been talking about him today, which I think is, is worth talking about because obviously he's the one who knows him. Do you know what I mean? You don't know him. I know I him. I don't know him. You know him, yeah. You but messaged he him on Instagram saying, Did he reply? Welcome to Manchester. Did he reply? Didn't reply. What a fraud. He was too in awe of the message. He was. He was um, too nervous. So he was talking about Martinez and he said, He's a warrior and I think the fans will admire him. He has an attitude, <laughs> fighting spirit. He brings aggressiveness in the game in a good way. Right. I think we need that. It's good. But, but also. And that is he's, what I want. But also, he's also skillful. Uh, and he can deal with the ball and he's left footed. I like that. That's just a positive these days, isn't it? There's become this thing where it's like you need a left footer and a right foot. There's a lot of managers that seem to subscribe to that. I like that. You know, he can deal with the ball and he's left footed. That's inherently better than being right footed, apparently. Um, he said, I think it's important. Uh, I think the Premier League is high intensity, lots of challenges. We need such players with uh, that fighting spirit. Um, he said he's, it's an advantage that he knows some of the ideas already, um, but also he has to adapt to a new country, a new club, new teammates, so lots of things will be different. The Premier League is high intensity, lots of challenges. We need such players. I know from South Americans, I call it Grinter. Grinter. Yeah. Controlled, aggressive. You need that in your game, and we have... Um, him with we have that with such a player so he sounds very that. a bit of Grinter isn't it yeah you need a bit of that what I, do you I think agree to, with him what do you think to Grinter you can never have too much Grinter no do you know what I mean and we've lacked it haven't we well we've got team. no Grinter we've had when no you look Grinter. at our team they're all too nice too soft like Lindelof's a beautiful human being lovely man like you know he doesn't hurt anybody really no. Harry Maguire tries to but he's often just miles behind you know McTominay likes to act like a hard man but doesn't do much mm. like if you look around the team we've got too many nice people or the ones that do think they're hard aren't actually very good so bringing in someone like Sandro Martinez someone that's a, you know makes us scared to play mm. against like we're too nice yeah, we do need a bit of that don't Soft. we but the thing is though you, I, I know that this is obvious but 
hopefully he's got more than just that. Like, he's well, someone, no, 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 he I seems think, like he's very look, talented I haven't as seen well, a whole doesn't he? host of him. I've seen him in the Champions League a few times. Yeah. And from what I've seen, yeah. his reading of the game is very good. Yeah. His technical ability is very good. Yeah. And having a left footer is important. Because yeah. especially when you need to play out from the back nowadays. How many times have we seen our defenders, you know, receive the ball on their left foot, switch it onto their right foot, pass it back yeah. across the box? Being able to play out from that position is important. So, yeah. And it, I think it leaves a lot of good problems for the manager. But you've got Varane, who I think is better than our captain. Lindelof, who I think is better than our captain. Mm. Eric Bailly, who I think is better than our captain. That's two, two of those three aren't very... Um, reliable injury wise or I haven't been yeah. for Manchester United and Overrun's been reliable injury wise before last season so you have to take that into consideration but if everyone's fit can't see the captain getting a sniff mm. which is a good thing and a bad thing and that's assuming Martinez is the player that we hope he is and yeah. obviously if he is but he's going to be starting from the start, right? the, the, the price tag uh, makes you feel so. like because with Malassia 15 million quid but then you can th- see it you can see him bus- rotating maybe he's the first choice maybe he isn't it's not like you go or what, what are you doing spending £15 million on someone who doesn't start for Manchester United? That's fine. £55 million or whatever it is, or 50-odd million. You yeah. think that that is someone who's going to start for you. But you, s- you say that, but then yeah. James Ducker, so Telegraph, obviously, very reliable. Yeah. He's saying that it's €55 million Euros plus the £10 million in add-ons, the yeah. Duckster. Uh, so it's, that's £46 million starting price up to, you know, what would that be? Just over 50, uh, 55 in add-ons. Yeah. Um, we've had players for that money not start before. Like Donny van der Beek was forty million. He's barely started yeah, but against Donny since van he arrived. It's completely different because Oli didn't even want him. Okay, all right then. Yeah, and this is a guy that oh, it's Ten Hag. Yeah. said I want him. Uh, and that he is spent a big difference. A third of his transfer budget. Yeah. On him. But sometimes so to do just that for someone you're not going to start seems baffling to but me. I don't think he's buying him with the view to not starting him. That's what I mean. I think he's buying him hoping he'll be good enough to start. I'm saying there's a chance he comes in and just isn't good enough. That's, uh, um, yeah, you know obviously. I mean? But I think, I think Fred's Eric, another one who took is, a long time to come. In Eric Ten Hag's match, yeah, but Fred again, Jose didn't want him. We left him on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> didn't it? We, yeah, why do we keep signing didn't players didn't for 50 million quid that no one Jose, we got beat off Juve. Fred's on the bench and Jose literally said after the game, I had looks on the bench, I had no one. This I is a player that, that Eric Tanag said, I want him. He obviously thinks he's good enough as he wouldn't have got him. Spent a third of his transfer budget on him. So I think in his mind right now, Eric Tanag thinks he starts for me. Yeah, I agree. So if he does start for him, like Maka was saying, then unless we play three at the back, which could happen, we've seen that happen this on this tour. Alex Tellers on the left side. So you think Martinez could swap with him, but you'd think it'd be a, a flat back four. Then who is it? Is it Maguire or Lindelof or Varane? For me, I think it's Varane. Because I just mm. think if Ra- Raphael Varane's available, you play him. I think he's our Can best you defender. Raphael Varane. Raf- Raphael, we call him Raphael Varane. Raphael Varane. Raphael Varane. <laughs> but I don't know. You're quite fond of Aaron Maguire. What do you reckon? I, I'm not. I, I don't think he's better than Varane. Yeah. I don't think he had a better season than Lindelof. Yeah. Um, but I, th- I just think he's he got more stick than maybe than he deserved. No, I, I agree. Some, with some that of on the that shit one. he got was like just ridiculous, really. No, um, I agree on that. But I, I think if everyone's fit and everyone's playing at their best or maybe not at the best where they were last season, mm. then I think, yeah, it would be Varane and, and Martinez Maguire's ahead of him. Style, yeah. even at his best, doesn't suit what... You know, let's let's say we, we give Maguire the benefit of the doubt mm-hmm. and say, look, everyone was crap last season. Yeah, okay. Let's give him an opportunity to redeem himself. Yeah. Which, you know... But yeah, I'm let's say that's about. what we're doing. But yeah. Let's say that. Even at his best, he doesn't suit what Ten Hag wants to do. Just purely footballing-wise. Mm. He can't bring the ball out with his feet. I think Ten Hag, he's, he's all right. Ten Hag wants yeah, his I defenders to, to move up the field with the ball at his feet. He's not very good at that, bro. I think he's better than you've given him credit for. Or, or he's not he's better not, than Bailly at that. He's not better than Varane he, at that. But, yeah, he's but not we, better than Lindelof. We need to take Bailly out of the conversation. I'm no, we afraid. don't. We do because no, he's been don't. at the club for five years and he's played a hundred games or whatever it is. That's not enough. He's not fit enough. I don't think any. I don't. And whether he's good enough or not, but he's I don't. Fit right now, he is. But I don't think Ten Hag is going to think. But we're giving I everyone a clean on. slate. We started this conversation. You can't, by you can't give that. someone a physical clean slate. We can't pretend that he's he's I think he's going to achieve physical peaks that, that he's never had before. I, I disagree slightly. I, I think I, I know what you mean. Lindelof can pick a reap pass. Yeah. Baye can be like Beckenbauer when he's on it. I think Maguire can carry the ball out of defence. That's not my problem with him. My problem is if you're going to play high up the pitch, he hasn't got any pace. Is he going to get caught out? Mm. That's Not my worry. Caught out against Melbourne victory, bro. Yeah, but so did Luke Shaw and so did Victor yeah, Lindelof. Yeah, Luke Shaw, we used to seeing Luke Shaw getting caught out. But and that's why Taran Malassi is going to be on his arse. Well, maybe. All right, then. On that front, I know we were doing this on your channel the other day. Let's do it again. YouTube.com slash Adam McClola. Check it out. Um, I'm going to claim this right. video, by the way. 
Brighton, everyone's fit. For the stuff we said in it. <laughs> yeah. Brighton, opening day, everyone is fit. Yeah, clean slate FC and all that. Who's your back four or your back five? Let's, look, I, let's not say first game of the season because I don't know if Lissandro's going to be fit for the... Like, well, everyone's fit. Pre -season. All right, everyone's, everyone's fit. Everyone's fit. Lissandro Martinez, because I don't see a manager spending 55 million on a centre-back and not playing him. Certainly not trying. Not starting him. Yeah, yeah. yeah you've got to at least try him. Um, everyone's fit. Rafael yeah. Varane. Yeah. Luke Shaw. Yeah. And Diogo Delo, who I think... <laughs> I know we were playing plumbers the other day. Yeah. But him and Sancho look great going down the right. Oh, my voice is going Disrespect. I mean, a bit, yeah, a bit of disrespect to I mean, the Scousers. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See what you did there? <laughs> um, I agree with all that, except, I don't know, you know, I, I might think Tarell Malassia might get a little nod. Do you think? I, I just think... He hasn't seen enough. He thinks we haven't seen enough from him yet. I, I agree, by the yeah. way. Yeah, I, yeah I, think he's, I think he's looked competent on the ball yeah. and he's, he seems to have a sort of a, a sort of physique and a style to him that kind of sort of dribbles his way out of trouble yeah. sometimes in, in a kind of almost miraculous way. But I think he needs to try and go past players a bit more. Yeah. And I think he needs, we haven't seen much of any crossing or passing ability from him yet. I think I, we haven't seen much from Shaw either, but we know what Shaw can do because we've seen him play, to, what, 200 games for Man United. I still think with Shaw, I know it's only pre-season, and I agree, Like we've seen far more of Shaw playing well for Manchester United mm. than we have, obviously, for Tyrone Massey, But... Even though the early doors is still that thing in the like, he looks sometimes he's go out there, cut the cross out a little bit. You said yeah. against Liverpool, do you know what I mean? Like, there still seems to be that thing of he switches off a little bit. Even now we're seeing it, and I just feel like maybe Eric Ten Hag's looking at it going, I know what Mass is about, I know I've got him. Mm. I don't owe Luke Shaw anything. And maybe I don't know. Maybe it is a bit of a risk, but I think he might be willing to take it. I know we're comparing apples and oranges here. Yeah, but. Um, What's his face? Martinez's record of headed mm. clearances and stuff yeah. better than most of our centre backs last season. Yeah, yeah. well, mm. I'll give you a couple of stats on that as well. Um, according to Opta, um, Lissandra Martinez completed more passes per 90 than any player that played 10 or more games in last season's Eredivisie. Uh, and he also had the best aerial dual success of any player to contest 100 or more aerials in the uh, last season as well, 70.2%. So, We'll get onto a bit more of his sort Look, of passing you, you ability, but aerially he's excellent. Physical battles, and you're there next to each other trying to win the ball. Yeah, but also a lot of headers are getting to the ball. Most, first, most reading the game, getting in front of someone. Do you yeah. not remember? Yeah. Forget that game against Everton, where Harry Maguire literally cleared the ball from like 15 times. Yeah, it was just constantly him heading the ball out. They had corner after corner after corner after corner. Mm. I think they had a goal disallowed as well, or something went on with one of the goals. But he, he was just non-stop clearing it. So, like, yeah, I get it. And it I tells also, you how, <coughs> like, a little bit, but it doesn't say the full story sometimes. The way we're going to play next season is going to be, you'd like to think we're going to have 60% of the possession in most Ooh. games. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, are we going to be a team that gives up that many chances where people are whipping balls into the box? And hopefully not. What's, I don't think so, mate. What's, I didn't get your back four or back five. Um, I think I'd go same as Adam. Yeah. Um, that makes more sense, like, to be honest with you. Yeah, I do think mine. that Ten Hag will start with Martinez yeah. Whether it, you know, we, it remains to be seen how how good he is, but I think Ten Hag obviously thinks he's good enough. Um, I think he'll therefore play. I think it'll be Shaw, Martinez, Varane, and Dan. Do, do you think this could be an issue? Not getting ahead of ourselves. But the World Cup is coming up now. Gareth, Gareth Southgate loves Harry Maguire. He does, but Harry Maguire is going to want to go to that World Cup. Yeah. If you're not playing week in and week out, then do you know what I mean? Yeah. You need I to mean, make that decision if, now. Yeah. Rafael Varane, you can't leave mid-season. But if I Rafael Varane's injury record is anything to go by, he yeah. will be playing week in yeah. How much of his injury record was, I can't be asked to play for Ralph Rangel. Well, if it is... Do you know what I mean? Then, like, yeah, but, I know that's a bad <coughs> thing, but yeah, if it is, that happens I'm, I'm not particularly I, impressed I, I by think him. some of it was rushing him back. He was injured and it was like, as soon as there was a sniff of him being fit, he'd throw him back in and he'd get injured again. And I think that Madrid probably handled him a little bit better than we, we did. And that's been a sort of a, a constant theme through the last few years with Manchester United. We've just Most not handled says. players well when it comes to injuries. He disagrees with me massively because it's very obvious he sees Martin as a Maguire because he's given Maguire the captaincy. The mm. thing is, he hasn't given him the captaincy. He's let him keep it. We were looking at this the other day when we were chat from all talking, weren't we, about mm. you could actually interpret that in either way because I sort of said, well, that's dealt with a captain's issue. And then someone on Twitter was like, actually, if you look at what he said, it doesn't mean anything. It's kind of, he's, the cap he's been the captain, he's staying the captain. Mm. It doesn't mean he can't change that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And also, if you're not starting, yeah. you're not captain. He could do a Robbo and mm. be the club captain. Mm. Do you know 
Genev. Mm. Do you know what I mean? After West Brom. Yeah. <laughs> Well, after Bolton, when Kevin Davis absolutely nobbled him, the prick. That three-week injury lasted three March years. March the 17th. That. That I remember that because it was St. Paddy's Day. Yeah. And it was the first time I took my brother to a game with me. Was that the 4-1? Yeah. Do you remember what I love about that 4-1? Bolton scored in the 90th minute, or 91st minute, to make it 4-1. And a geezer that scores, runs in the back of the net, grabs the ball, <laughs> and none of his teammates, <laughs> none oh. of his teammates move. They're all going, what are you doing? And he goes... All right, yeah. Just drop, just drop that again. <laughs> Come on, lads. Four goals in three minutes. And then he minutes. chucks the ball back yeah, in the net. Like, what <laughs> He's in his own net. <laughs> Forget <laughs> it. What's yeah, the point? That. Um, and what's what's the, the people's yeah, saying? Uh, it, it seems to be a, a bit of a mixed bag, really. There's a, people worried about his height. People saying that they think he um, he might play alongside Maguire, like you said, like you mentioned there. Yeah. Um, it's what about it's, this DM thing, Joel? Oh. Well, let's go into that because I've got Joseph. I've got a few numbers on that. Go on. Um, and he has played DM before. Um, let's go through the last three seasons um, and where he's played, which positions he's played in. So okay. uh, going back to uh, three years ago, 2019-20, he played 41 games in total, 19 of them as a, as a centre-back, 22 as a DM. So that season it was pretty much a 50-50 split. Um, then the 2020-2021 season, he played 42 games in total, 34 at centre-back, uh, 7 at left-back and 1 at right-back. No real games at, at CDM. Um, uh, cause this is according to transfer market, by the way, so this is our source on this. And then last season, he played 37 games, all of which were at centre-back. Um, there was a quote from uh, Ten Hag talking about Martinez, and he said uh, that he doesn't have the stamina to play in midfield. Uh, that's what Ten Hag said in 2021 after trying him in midfield before. Um, so therefore, it would be somewhat of a surprise to see him playing in midfield in what is generally considered to be a, a more physically demanding league if he didn't have the stamina to do it in, in, in Holland. What year was that when you said he played most of his games at DM? Well, yeah. It's just, 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 no, no, can you just it say? It was the nineteen twenty. So was that the season, season just after they sold Frankie and that? Yes, I think that was when Frankie just gone. So that Frankie may explain gone. why he had to play then. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. they had no options in there so he played there. Now yeah. that's not to say he can't do it or he won't do it for United and maybe eventually because it feels unlikely we're going to buy a number six. Mm. We know the options that we have at the moment are more suited to being eights if they're any good anyway. Um, so maybe he could play there if everybody's fit. But again, can you see everyone being fit at the same time? Probably not. It's miraculous though, isn't it, how the top teams tend to have players fit all the time. Like I know obviously good teams have injuries and therefore they, they drop off like Liverpool when they had like <clears> loads <throat> of people injured, just scraped top four. But like... City, even even De Bruyne, who's someone who's injury prone, he's still getting thirty to forty games out of him a season. The, like Liverpool's yeah. just Liverpool's team Liverpool, didn't get injured Liverpool, at all last season. Liverpool are a funny the one. The season before that, they got loads of injuries, but yeah. the season before that, when they won the league, they had no injuries all season to their top players. Because it's much. easy to be, make yourself available when you're playing C for a winning team. Exactly. City, that's City, what I kind of meant C with Varane. City, yeah. To be fair, have had in, like De Bruyne missed almost the full season. They went through what, they two, year, Fernand, two they years. Two years. They had Fernandinho and all sorts of right back and for, uh, there was yeah. a season where they lost the Leeds Liverpool where Fernandinho was. Back but that's what I mean. It seems season. to be like a one-on-one -on -one off for yeah. them. Whereas United, every single year, I think with Pope them, is out for three months. Shaw's out for three months. The thing is, as well, like I think it actually hurt City when they lost um, their centre backs and they had to move. Fernandino yeah, I in. agree with that. But like last season, they had so many options. Where with us, you lose Bruno, you lose Ronaldo, Ronaldo. or Pogba even last season, and it's like you're looking around and you're thinking, who's going to fill See, in that's these That's the one shoes? position we've got no depth in. I know we don't really want to go from the centre back chat yet, but go on. You look. I think Ronaldo's gone, lads. I think we have to look at that cold. Do you heart. think that? Wait, I think I, I, personally, I think Ronaldo isn't going to be playing for Man United next season. I know Eric Ten Hag said he's not for sale, but if he's not for sale, he's here right now, not in our bedroom, but in Melbourne right now. What other reason has he got not well, to be he, here? They've, they've said this personal family uh, reason. Uh, call me naive or soft, but I'm sort of tempted to go right then. You know what? If that's what you want to say. Who am I to argue until I'm told otherwise? Factually. And because uh, I think it, it's, if it's not a family reason, which I, again, I am inclined to believe that it is. Um, just because why not give him the benefit of the doubt we know what he's been through in the last yeah, six months and he played the week well. after yeah. like he's not someone that is looking for reasons to not play games um, So, but let's assume it's not then surely Ten Hag wouldn't want to keep him if he's literally going on strike no, no, but there's for a way two to weeks. politically go look he's not for sale publicly Yeah, to save the meltdown save whatever may come from that and I think I personally think he's off 
Mm. There's no, there's, no, he'd be here. Who would want him? Bayern Munich, Atletico Madrid. I think I'm Bayern said they're not. Yeah, Atletico but Nagelsmann they and their, I think CEO said that they don't want him at Bayern. Atletico. Atletico. I don't know. I was reading. I'm, again, I'm not. As, you did the news today, didn't you? Mm. But last time I was seeing, I think the Atletico rumors were getting a little already going a bit cool. Yeah. Because it's like again, I think he's one. He's on huge money at United. Even with his 25 percent pay cut, he's still on more wages than he'll get at practically 99 percent of clubs. There's only one or two clubs in the world mm. that would pay him that money. So unless they really want him and are willing to do that, he's gonna have to take a pay cut to go somewhere. And I don't know if he'll do that. I know there's this Champions League thing, and I get it because he's missed the Champions League and he wants to be, you know, push his record even further and all that sort of stuff. But I don't know. And I think there's sort one there of, of someone was saying, oh, he could go back to Sporting or somewhere. But then it's not just that he wants to be in a Champions League. He wants to be in a Champions League with a team that's got a chance of winning it. Yeah, he's not he's not there just to have a laugh. Utkash makes a good point, though. He goes, mm. Ronaldo's come out and squashed the rumours about Sporting like that. Yeah. He's not quashed the rumours about him wanting to leave. He's mm. not, you know, he's not squashed rumours about but any again, other though, clubs. Again, though, that's a bit of a... a but it's it's, not, a, it's a bit of a false logic to say, you you denied these rumours and you didn't deny all of these, therefore they must be true. I think, whilst I agree that he's not going to sport... But I then he could have easily come out and said, I'll be... Uh, look, I'll be playing I'll for be United. Yeah, of course. There's, well, he issues. obviously wants to leave. He, that's obvious, isn't it? I think that story is... There's yeah, no, there's, there's I no, don't think there's... A, yeah, I agree with you. I think the, the, the point about him wanting to leave isn't up for debate. No. I think the point about him having his family issue yes. is, and I'm erring on the side of caution there because I just think, like, you know, you don't know and there's a chance I might be wrong, but I'm But if it is you know, family issues, him. and look, let's say it is, yeah. you come out and nip it in the bud. And I know you could say maybe Eric Ten Hag has done that with what he's been saying, mm. but I just, I just can't. I think he wants to leave and I think yeah, he will he leave. And I think ultimately it's in Ten Hag's interest to let him leave if he wants to leave, even if we are then short up front. Do you know what I mean? Like the, because is it I is it in his interest though? Yes. If he you leaves, don't want though, Cristiano Ronaldo in the dressing room wanting out. If he leaves, though, we are in a lot of trouble because if your boy Tony gets injured, we've got no one. We, I agree, <laughs> but at the same time, like, literally, no I one is a he, nine over the them two. I think having him in the squad, not wanting to be there, and I know he's a professional and he wants to leave Juve and he played for them when he still wants. I think it causes more issues than it mm. solves. Mm. I'm um, not. I, I understand that. I just feel like you you need to find a striker from somewhere. Mm. You cannot put Marcus back down the middle or put Ilanga down the middle or you know try Bruno as your your, your, your number nine or whatever. It's not going to work. You have to have because you, then you've literally got Tony M on his own as your only striker and you potentially playing sixty games next season. That ain't going to work. And also. He hasn't got the best injury track record. No. Like, uh, generally speaking, he's going to miss a month next season. Yeah. Um, so and then we're going to put like, yeah. you know, no striker. Literally, or who he's playing up front in that scenario. Like Bruno. You know the links to mm, even probably. Tony. Yeah. I don't know if they're true or not, but yeah. I love him. Do you? Even Tony would be. We spoke class, about him a few a little while ago. I think ago. who which strikers have been on the move this summer? Gabriel Jesus. Even mm -hmm. Tony's better than him. Do you I actually think. think that? I promise you, he is. No, you can't promise me. Leading a line, I'd rather Ivan Tony leading the line for us. Yeah, leading I a promise you, mate. Ivan Tony leading the line mate, for United. I swear down. Would be better than Gabriel Jesus leading the line for United. The different types of players, aren't they, to be fair? Yeah. He's, he's, even Tony's more of a striker. But you could argue that Jesus is more suited, uh, sorry, has more experience playing in a system like Ten Hag. Not as the main man. Well, he played as a nine for City. He played, he played for City with the best midfield behind him and never scored that many goals. True. In a season. Now, he's, look, he might do well for Arsenal. I'm not saying he's not going to do well for Arsenal, even though I question that because as the main number nine for a club like Arsenal with the weird fans that they've got putting mm. pressure on players every single week, moaning about, you know, all sorts. I think Ivan Tony would be the bollocks, brother, as a backup striker. I've, 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 I've mentioned him before and I'm not against the idea. I don't know. I think that maybe... I'm I'm missing someone. There's someone out there, like maybe in Europe or somewhere mm. that you can go and you can get who would be a good young striker who, who could come in. But there's no one that sort of stands out because most of the best ones have you know have even been ruled out. They're not moving or they've gone already mm. or they cost too much because even if Ronnie goes, we're not suddenly going to have 80 million to spend on a striker. We no. should. <coughs> if we had owners that gave a toss, Ronnie'd leave and they'd go right. This is a you know something that's got to be dealt with we're going to sanction more money. Yeah. But they won't because well, they don't think, care that much. If we, if you swapped Ronaldo for Tony, yeah. you're probably saving 
it's over the next sort of year, you're probably saving in the region of 10 to 12 million quid Crazy on wages. Wet dream, though, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? He's yeah. going, you're going from... John's having a wank. You're going, from, that. Of, yeah. that's you're going like from 500 grand a week, which is, what, That's up there with million not million getting quid. Ireland, let's get a gallo Yeah, then. to 100 grand a week, probably, in Tony. Yeah. Uh, and you're saving, you know, four-fifths of his wages there. So I can see that see, possibly ben says, happening. But ben says Tony scores more goals for City than what Jesus did. So if you put Tony in that position... I don't know. I man. agree. I don't know. I, I agree. I think with Jesus, he's... He's a player that does the job they needed him to do. He scores mm. some important goals. He's not that great. I'm not a big fan of his, but I think he actually weighs in with some important goals rather than lots of them, mm. if that makes sense. Ivan's class. I think he's a good player. I, I just think don't my think My only sort of slight What, what is that? What is he concern. meant to be for us? He's, Backup striker. Yeah. So you have Tony We sell Ronaldo, who is our starting number nine, and we replace him with... Yeah, but Tony M's coming through. I know, but we can't rely on that now, can and we? And then you could have a scenario where you say, if Tony Marshall's out for a month, you could have eight games. Yeah. Or, well, not eight, the six could, you games. Could be, you, you could be facing a, a FA Cup quarter final, a Europa League semi final, and two games to sort of, you know, wherever City in February, in the whatever. Oh, we're a team about, we're with about Tony the team, though, remember? Of we're going to be about the team. Yeah, in the, and in the same way. And the system that, functions yeah. and all those kind of things. So mm. we're more about the team than individuals. And that's why I'd be more confident in it working. Mm. It's just a shame, isn't it? Because the youngsters we've got, the likes of Hugh Gill and McNeil, they're not quite there yet. No. I think if this was a couple of years down the line, one of them would be ready. I just don't think you could throw them He's in not yet. Got the I love them both, either. but I just don't think it. I think it'd be too much to ask. I think physically as well, there's another year at least to go there before you can start thinking about that. So Tony M's going to play every game and score every game anyway. Well, if that happens, we're laughing. Yeah, 60 goals. Yeah, I think that's a reasonable. Easy, mate. And you know who we could get and who we should be getting? you got to keep these good vibes going. There's only one man. You got Danny Welbeck. 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 Well back. Well back. Well back, that is it. I want you Seriously. back for good. Honestly. If, and you know if he scores on the first... It's the first game he scores, we're on the pitch. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever Standard. It did, Even if it's for Brighton against us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it's not for Man United. Um, Hugh Grant, who's Danny been a member for seven for months. Good. Hugh Grant. Yeah. That, yeah. The Hugh Grant. That one, yeah. Yep. Can you read out some of these super chats that the lovely people I'm have been sending I'm trying to, but us? you're interrupting me. Hugh Grant says, hope you guys What's he are doing? enjoying the trip. when you're reading super chats? <laughs> that is so frustrating. Hugh Grant, who's <laughs> written in a super chat that I'd like to read. Well, read it then. Says, hope Hugh you guys Grant. are enjoying the trip. Can't what, wait to see Martinez actually. play and hopefully get De Jong to join soon. What do you think to Hugh Grant's chat? Well, I couldn't hear because you were talking over <laughs> it. <laughs> Go on then. No, listen, I agree with him. <laughs> I think Hugh makes a great point. Do you point. agree with him? Say what he said again. <laughs> you can read it this time. James Wood says, get Yip Yap stand back to play with the butcher. Yip Yap, I like this. James Wood and Hugh Grant. This is like yeah. a film star's, you know, dream. It's good actually, isn't it? A film director's dream even. Yeah, um, yeah Yip Yap stand, the best defender the Premier League has ever seen. And that is a fact. As Mac would say, trust me, it's a fact. Yeah. Um, trust me. Yeah, is, what is it you were saying? Trust me, it's happening. It's happening, yes. Uh, Natalie Portman says, no, not really. JB Park. <laughs> very good, very uh, good. Super says, is it just me? I don't know what's so special about this kid. Many other defenders better out there. Bastoni uh, and Kim Min Jai. I don't know about Kim Min Jai. It's not just the, the player and who's better. He's, the manager knows him. He knows mm. what, how he wants to play. He knows he will play the way he wants. And he knows what he's bringing to this team. He knows all that. And you've also got someone who knows the manager. So he's going to sort of come in here and have the right attitude. and knows what to expect and all that jazz. And he's Argentinian. Argentina. Argentina. Well, who's the oh, best Argentina. Argentinian we've had? Argentina. We have had. Tevez has probably had the most positive impact. Tevez. Yeah. That 2008 yeah, season broke, was excellent. You know, but I yeah. would say he broke my heart, but he pissed yeah, me off. Yeah, it was annoying. Yeah, um, Seba Varane, pure talent-wise. For fun times, Marcus Rowe. I mean, Romero did a job. Well, no, let's not bring Romero into it. Well, he did. Um, <laughs> yeah, it'd have to be Carlos Tevez. Let's not be silly here. He said he did a job. I mean, 07, 08. Some yeah. Of goals, yeah, it's definitely Ronaldo, Tevez. That Tevez one season goal. is... I still think we made a mistake not playing him in Rome. I know you love Park, but I'd have dropped Park deeper. Mm. I couldn't get over the idea of not starting Tevez, mate. It's mm. bonkers. Especially against that. someone like Barcelona. I know. That work. Rate. Remember in 08 when him and Rooney were like mm. three players between them? Yeah. It was ridiculous defending from the front. Carlos, even though he was all that RIP Fergie stuff and he went to City and that, he was the bollocks. Yeah. He's a very good player. Yeah, really And he player. scored five goals in his last season, which... I like important goals when I was involved in the Berbatov Tevez debate but um, yeah Tevez was sick um, Alex United uh, with the Super says Mikel Antonio to United now before you before Get you start doing repeat. faces right Mikel Antonio is guaranteed what else he's not made an even to have 
a six goals in seven game spell at some point in the season. We don't know when it's going to be. So he, won't score, he won't score. He won't score. No, Ian. He won't score any goals outside no, of that spell. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But he will have. Did you forget the Moise era This is why you get interrupted. Go on. Because you taught Robbie when did Danny, Danny Welbeck score six he scored goals in seven six games every year? Moise. Every yeah. year. 2013. Yeah. There so you go. Ten years yeah. ago, he may or may not no, have did. done that. He got six in seven. I remember it well. Do yeah, well, yeah. yeah, at the time. I uh, was at home. <laughs> <laughs> Just watching in that. Um, um, Mikel Antonio, he's 31 no. years old. He's had a purple patch at the beginning of the season. Didn't have a great end to the season. Does did okay. Year. You know, he runs a lot. He's a grafter. He's not a Manchester United player by any stretch of the imagination. At least with Tony, I think he's, what, 26 or something, 27? 26. He's got a few years in him. He's about to hit his prime. Yeah. Tony Antonio. Marshall, yeah, well, that him as well. Uh, Mikel Antonio, no. A 31-year-old from West Ham who's lucky if he'll get you double figures. Uh, and he's in his decline. And also, is he a 10 half player? No. And I he's think. just not that good, is he? No. Let's be honest. He's, he's decent, but he's, that's he'd, it. He'd come to United and we'd treat him like Lukaku. Yeah. yeah. Like we'd be like... Jeering his I like him as a person. Like he gives a good interview and stuff. He yeah. comes out with and uh, carries himself well. And get he... him on the channel then. Let's yeah. not get him. Yeah, in no, no, that's team. my point. You know, we've done the whole. Oh, we like them. Like I love Digallo, mm. but, <laughs> but you know what I mean. He's a lovely lad. Let's start having his some Instagram players. was ace. Let's start having some it... players that we hate. Yeah, I'd rather have someone like Tevez who you don't particularly like, but he's mint. Yeah, than someone who you love who's not very good at football. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I'm not being nice on these kids, but sentimental. Uh, Callum Imri says, "What's your thoughts on the right back situation? Dallow seems to have the starting spot, but is he really good enough? Does Laird do enough to not need Wan Bissaka? Wan Bissaka looks like the only one that's had any rumours of being sold or transferred, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, he's, he, you'd think as well we could get some money for him, which might be you know a bit more attractive. Dallow seems to be the preferred choice so far. I know it's only very early doors. Great to see Ethan Laird getting some games as well because there's no doubt in his talent. It's just." The kids had no luck of injuries, mm. especially with that sort of 17, 18 year old sort of age where it can really affect you long term. Can't it? Had um, a couple of decent loan spells, though, so hopefully. Laird and Dullo. Yeah, I, I could see that working. I could, and I think Wan Bissaka, I, I think he's halfway out of the door. I found uh, Ten Hag's comments recently about the squad and the World Cup coming up and all those kind of mm. things and saying how we need a deep squad. Maybe he can change his mind about Wan Bissaka okay. leaving. Do you know what I mean? Um, when you think of the midfield positions and all those areas. Like, it's true about the World Cup. Um, we're going to need players. We're going to need a full, full squad. Um, and that's why that nine position does worry me a little bit. Mm. Do you think... Just sorry, I didn't want to say it, but no. just with Wambasaka, there was talk maybe you can get 25 million for him because don't forget we paid 50 for him like not that long ago. Could that be reinvested into a, towards a striker so you're not having to go... But then, if you sell Wambasaka, you need a right back. I think you could. You don't think you could rely on Laird and, and Delo? Because I think Laird will probably benefit from playing week in, week out. What about and Delo and Sancho have looked. I know it's. I know again, it's early you know, doors. The Scousers and, and well, Melbourne on. victory, but Sancho and Delo have looked good. To me. Do you think there's any? I know he had a bit of a stink, to say the least, in Madrid. But do you think there's any scope where you could use Linda Love at right back? He did Guess it. He's not. done it for years. He did it for years ago. Or oh, you could see us go to a back three. Maybe, yeah. Uh, we've done mm. that, haven't we? Well, then you still need some semblance of a right back, back, don't you? It's like, there's something got to happen in I front of I think that hurts Sancho as well, doesn't it? How's that work with Sancho? Yeah, unless he's playing back, wing back, back but three. that's not happening. It's, yeah, because he's not a wing back. I think Sancho is going to be really thriving under. I've already seen glimpses of it. I think he's going to thrive. Yeah, me too. Um, Jay? Yes. Is crotch discomfort hurting your game? Your, mate, you, I can see all your balls there. Yeah, and they're very well right. groomed as well. Um, <laughs> It used to, but <laughs> yeah, I've seen the lights, the LED lights. Well, you've also seen that the kings of crotch comfort manscaped. Yes, trademarked. Trademarked. Have spent two years designing the most Sweet. comfortable boxer briefs out there. Anti-chafing technology yeah. in full effect. Full effect. Yeah. Yeah. They're soft. They're sleek. They're comfortable. They're flexible. That's because the boxers 2.0 from Manscaped take your <laughs> balls to the royal throne. Yeah, sit down on Box the throne. Two point man. That's what you need. And what yeah. do you feel when you sit down wearing them, Jay? Like a king. Like a king. I wear them on my mindscapes to the gym. Do you? Yes. Yeah. Do you know what? That's that's like they're like your off-road pants, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. Like you need them for the real harsh yeah, conditions because you know they're gonna hold they up. They look after them. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, here's the thing with Manscaped: you can get twenty percent off and free shipping using the code Devils Twenty at checkout. The link is also in the description. So click on the link in the description now, Jay. Yo. When you go for a run, yes. When you've got, let's say, a kids' parents' evening. Yeah. When you've got, I don't know, 
you know, yeah. you're interviewing Sir Alex Ferguson. Yeah. These are high pressure situations. Yeah. A normal boxer won't cut it. Can you imagine? Do you know what I mean? Your Can life you is full of it. Can you imagine me sat there in parents' evening, yeah. squirming and fidgeting yeah. because me balls are getting chased. Quite literally, dripping sweat. Can we not yeah. talk about your balls and school together, please? Why? Why? Did you not get yours till after you'd left? <laughs> <laughs> you need the boxers to point out. It's that simple. Honestly, yes. they are brilliant. They're made from... I thought you were going to say, can we not talk about your balls and Sir Alex Ferguson, which I was going to say, yeah, that's a good yeah, that's, point. That's true. That is well. very true. But yeah, listen, what I love about this as well mm. is, it's not just the anti-chafing technology on the boxer briefs. Mm -hmm. It's a crop preserver. Yeah. The crop toner. Yeah. The bag, the little kit bag. The travel bag. The travel bag. Yeah. Yeah. So you can feel special, yeah. like you're one of the players coming off the coach with your little kit bag there. It's good do you know what I mean? Thumbs you know when you up walk to the cameras you and all that. You know, like, you love see, like, that, players mate. getting off with, like, their bags and that yeah. going into the stadium. I love doing that into the travel lodge, you know, yeah. if you're just going away for a weekend. It's minute, like, yeah, waving, a little waving to reception. Like, 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 cameras and, like, people are like, what's up with him? Cheers. What's wrong Running with him? Running in. Uh, do you know it's what the I mean? the best. It is the best. Uh, they've also, they've made it out of a micro modal fabric, Jay. Do you know what that is? Close to What? Mint. It's absolutely mint, that's what it is. It's buttery soft, it's breathable, and it keeps your cucumber cool. Nice. <laughs> so you can run, walk, strut your stuff I with strut confidence. I'm walking down that road, yeah. like Brittany. And the great thing as well with Manscaped is, it's catering for everyone, from small to 3XL, yeah? For all the guys out there, you can it get... It's 3XL, I tell you. Yeah, it's is it? You have to have used Manscaped. Nice. Nice. Get the bush back, you see Good. it all. Wow, really yeah. just you know I mean? just bring it into Adds focus. a few more inches. It does. A few. Bloody hell, yeah, how big hey, is the so bush? Yeah. Like a rhododendron. It was, it was crazy. It was <laughs> good. Fuck yeah. Uh, so make sure you check out Manscaped. They've got the boxers. They've got the uh, the, the trimmers, the nose hair trimmers, the, the toners. They've literally got everything to cover you in your needs. So make sure you use the code DEVILS20 for 20% off and free shipping at checkout. Link in the description. You don't want to be using your mum's old bick, do you? No. no, you don't. No, absolutely not. God, some of those rusty old bicks that we've used in our time here, guys. Nah. Hey, Hi. who's with me? Um, <laughs> have you enjoyed Melbourne, Adam? I've loved it, man. Have you? It's been amazing, yeah. We've been a bit worse for wear the last two days, haven't we? Mm. We've hardly vlogged anything because we've just been ruined. Ruined. Um, but yeah, we, it's been amazing. It's been... It's been entertaining. Been at the MCG? We've been... Oh, mate, iconic. I've all, Look... I'm not the hugest cricket fan, hugest. but I've been an Ashes fan mm. for a long time. Since 2005, my GCSE year, I got sent home to do study leave. Watch the, watch the Ashes, mate. One of the greatest <sighs> Ashes series ever. Well, the greatest. And from it. them, I got hooked. MCG's iconic. Iconic. Remember when we went Perth and we saw the Wacker? Yeah, and I was, was buzzing. Good. That was good. Like, the MCG was iconic. So I can't wait, because last time I was in... Oh, media section. Like a right knob. No, this time, no, tomorrow... On. I'm going in with the fans, mate. Yeah. That's the biggest stadium I've ever been in. 100,000. Have you been in one bigger than I that? I went to one in Brazil. 5,000. I, I don't know. Like, it might be. I can't remember. I didn't. Is it American might, Yeah. Is that one it? of the, the way uh, Holland played Spain. I'm not sure, but it's one of anyway. It's either yeah. that. I think it's bigger than the Allianz and some of the other stadiums, Wembley and, and whatnot. But yeah, it's huge. It's great atmosphere as well. Um, it was a top laugh. It's just been minute so far. And, you know, what I love about it as well is you, you appreciate how spoiled you are. Being a you know a United fan who can just go to the game whenever you want, mm. drive or walk even to the, to the ground and, and just decide on the day I'm going to go to the game today or not. These guys are getting up at daft o'clock. They get you know rare um, chances to, to to see the team in the flesh and that. And yet the mad passionate, the proper getting behind it, and it's great to see. And it's, yeah, it's just been a buzz. Yeah, the Aussies have been amazing with us, man. Even in yeah. Thailand as well, the, the the Thai people and everyone else that we met because it's not just when we're out here in Australia or we're out out there in Thailand. It's people from the local countries that are coming mm. over as well, yeah. or the local cities, and uh, yeah, everyone's just shown us so much love. It's been crazy, man. I've loved it, and and it's like it's like Jay said, you learn to appreciate. I remember when I went America, in I think it was fifteen for the preseason tour. We went to Singapore for the preseason tour a few years back, and you just learn to appreciate how much the club means to other people. And you know, mm. you always hear people, oh, they're not even from, you're not from Manchester, or you're not from England, or you're glory hunters and that. Mate, you try waking up at four o'clock in the morning to watch that shit. Mm. <laughs> well, you know what I mean? People, I like, some of the lads are asking me like, you know, some people don't consider us real fans and stuff. And yet, they're getting up at, they were saying, waking up at two o'clock in the morning, on a Monday morning, yeah. watching us lose, 
yeah. and then going to work straight after. Yeah. Horrible. Like, that's not a proper Horrible. Fan. You, you can't be more dedicated than that. You wake up, watch us lose yeah. to Burnley and then go to work all day. Like, yeah. come on. That's, it's, that's, it's amazing. It's, it's not, it's Sem, Sem's got a question for you. Please Sem's, read uh, Sem Ocean, with a question, says, this is the best trio on YouTube. Thank you. And then in brackets, Joe shows you, Willie, I'll send 100 quid. <laughs> go on. Huh? Let's not pretend we don't need that. <laughs> we need that. Yeah. Callum, I need a frozen sausage stat. Roll it, un- <laughs> roll it under the table and we'll get you, I'll, I'll get you 50 quid. Um, unfortunately, I can't do that. Yeah, we would do it, but it's um, YouTube, innit? Yeah. Yeah, YouTube. On his innit? OnlyFans, he does those yeah. things. Yeah, that's true. Only mans. Only meat. Only. Only love lengths. Nice. Nicely done. Love length. Yes, definitely. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> Have you got any more super chats there before I move on to Wally's of the Week? Uh, Tom Hutton Wait, says. Wait, we finished. Do you think no, no, not yet. We've got another ten minutes ago. Do you yet. think we tried to get delict? Looks like he's off to Bayern. I never thought we would get delict. I, I think everyone, think right? Really, um, like, I understand it because when Ten Hag was linked with us or when it was announced he was going to be the manager, people looked at his most successful players and thought, "Who is available?" De Jong looks like it, it could happen. The Licks was one of those. Mm. You looked at one of one or two others and you thought, "Okay, maybe Anthony, maybe Julian Timber, or whatever." These were the players that kept getting mentioned. Obviously, some of them, you know, they could still happen. Others just not happening at all. Mine has, has happened. Um, so, the Licks, I understand why people were saying that. But you look at United's transfer budget, there was no way we were ever going to spend what it would take to get him to bring him in. It would have been nice. And I, and I wish he stayed at Juventus for another season. So, yeah. we could have got a little bit of business done now. Mm. Got the lit next time around. I think that would have been nice. But, yeah, I, I never... Never expected it to happen. Are you a little bit surprised, like, just looking at who we've picked up so far? I know we've still got three weeks or just, you know, just under. That going into next season, if you take Martinez out of it, we've still got Varane, Lindelof, Maguire, Baye, Jones. Jones. Like, there are still options there. Yeah. Whereas up front, it is just Ronaldo, who may well believe it. has been linked with uh, DC, and it? Now we've, Rooney's gone there. Yeah. But we've got no CDMs. Yeah. Like, are you a bit surprised we've just spent fifty million quid on a on a centre back when we've got no number sixes at the yeah, club, like 100%. none whatsoever? I thought didn't seem like that a priority would have been to me. Priority. Yeah. DM. Even De Jong isn't an out and out six, is he? If we get him, He's, I know he plays there. there he plays. Play yeah, 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 yeah. I get that. I but I, I did think we're going to have to go and get a defensive midfielder mm. of sorts because we've got options there. You can play. You know, Garner could play there, or you can play him at some Shame there, he's or been you can play. Yeah, it is. Yeah, because I think he'll be probably a bit gutted because he'll have seen the likes of Zidane Iqbal and Charlie Savage smashing it, and he'll be wanting to get a bit in and on the action. Um, so I am a little bit surprised, yeah. But then again, you know, we have to trust this manager. We were talking the other day and we were saying, is it a bit concerning that you're getting all these players from from Holland? You know, all these players, but you know, Martinez mm. and Malassia, everyone will link with as yeah, well. And you know, maybe we're gonna get um, Anthony. And it's like, is that what we're doing now? Buying players from the Dutch division, is that okay? Or should we not be having you know, a better scouting or whatever? Or maybe not just listening to the manager, but bringing the scouts in as well. But you have to give him this, this trust because mm. he obviously, you know, he's been brought in for a reason. I don't think he's naive. I don't think he's going to go, oh yeah, they're good enough for that. I'll just throw him in and they'll be fine. He must know there's a different level to the Premier League. Mm. And he's managed in the Champions League. Do you know what I mean? He's managing, I know it's only one game, but he saw what Spurs were capable of. He's not going to be just completely oblivious to what goes on in the Premier League. So you just got to trust him. Yeah. And I think the other thing to bear in mind is the scouts or whoever it has been buying plays for the last 10 years have hardly done the best job in the world. I think so there's part of you that thinks at some point, when's, when's hopefully, you know, he might have a better anyone? job than anyone else. When's the last time United scouted anyone? No, it's genuine. Freddie Adu, Dan James. Dan James, who, yeah. you know, Christ, that bargain that, that we paid three you know what I mean? times like, what Leeds offered for He was from a, a non-top earlier. league yeah. and we sold him for a profit. But. The best sign we've probably made, arguably anyway, sorry, is Bruno, who was linked with Spurs and the Scousers. Anthony Marsh. What are, you, what are you laughing for? Hmm? But even what he was a laughing? golden boy nominee, wasn't he? Yeah. It wasn't like he was exactly. unknown. Do you know what I mean? It was like, I, I don't think there's one way you go, gem that, hey, did our homework and got him in. No. There's never been that since post Fergie ever. Even Dan James, I'm not having because, like I say, Lee's went in for He's four crap. million. Yeah, it's like we got good money for him, but when mm. he was linked with a move from Swansea to Leeds in the January for four and a half million, we buy him in the the June for. And I'm sure 15. we didn't scout him. Ryan Giggs just went, oh yeah, he's quick. Yeah. I mean, oh, 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 he's quick. Yeah, he must be like the new Ryan Giggs. That's what I mean. So I don't actually think there's been anyone where you go. 
I mean, Igalo, he was knocking on his director's door at Eiffel Everyone. He's some trying to get a move. Some people saying Ahmad is, a, is one that was... 37 million, though. He's yeah, not. but he was an unknown player. who would but he, He played, what, 60 minutes for... But again, Facundo Palistri. Yeah. Gary. But again, well, they're the not... The bro- out there, we're not, you know, like we've bought him, but they're not... I'm no. not saying they won't, but we can't say, oh, that's good there many, scouting. There aren't many scouting success the, stories, yeah, are there? because they might not work out. I mean, I hope they do. I'm, you know, there's Hannibal Medjbury. Thanks to Paul Tierney. That's a shout, actually. We only like 14 when we bought him. We bought him for 10 million from Monaco. That's a lot, though, isn't it? But like, <laughs> no, okay. but yeah, I don't mean. These are all potentially future stars, but is there anyone who has actually played for Manchester no. United's first team? I think Javier Hernandez was the last one. Javier gem. Hernandez. Yeah. Was the Javier. Last one. <laughs> Javier. Yeah, Javier. 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 Javier Hernandez. Javelin Hernandez. Chicharito. Yeah, I think um, he's the last one who yeah. I'd never heard of him at all. Yeah. He comes in for cheap and starts loads of games and is successful. I've just not seen it and, yeah. like, Okay, City go out and they spend 30, 40 million on loads of players. The Scousers do, you know, big money on a lot of players, but they get the odd one. Mm. Where you go, actually, yeah, that's not that's not too shabby, that. Do you know what I mean? For what you've paid for him, it's well, well worth it. Yeah. With well, United, we always seem to pay top whack, don't we? Mm-hmm. And now half these players, we were sat here before talking about Wamba Saka and Aaron Maguire, who cost 130 million quid between them, not starting. Yeah. And we only signed <laughs> like, him two years ago. I know. Mm. It's, it's, it's if you sold them today, you wouldn't get half your money back. You wouldn't, would you? And it's this cycle we've had it. You know, you had Moyes comes in with Fellaini and, and Matt. So I know Matt is probably one of our better signings. And even Fellaini did a job, but then it's Van Gaal brings his own men in. Mm. Then it's Jose brings his own men in. Then it's Ole doesn't want some of Jose's. You know, Lukaku gets moved on. Sanchez gets moved on. You just have this little bit of a cycle that ends up sort of getting us nowhere really. So we need to start being a bit boxing a bit more clever. Hopefully, some like Malassia who cost. Next to nothing could be a, a bit of a find. They're the ones that you... It's like why I think... I know I'm taking it off away from... Oh. But I think that Julian Alvarez will be a better buy than Haaland. Really? Haaland comes with this huge expectation and this big fee and this weird run and all that. Mm. Massive that, that fraud. Nordic meat shield. That Alvarez that fella. Was it on that? That, that, greet, that greeting guy. <laughs> See that? Yeah, that was good, that. The thing is, though, you don't even need to scout like dead cheap players <laughs> that no one's ever heard of. <laughs> no, no, I'm scout, not saying... If, I'm not, no, I'm yeah. not fucking you. But if United scouts could just sign expensive players that were good, yeah. that would be a well, start. That's what City do, I don't, don't mind. You. Yeah, that's what Bernardo City do. Bernardo Silva for 34 yeah. million 50 is a million bargain. Quid, but make it be... Because of what he does for him. A good 50 million, yeah. like Bruno was. You know, yeah. there's plenty of wasted 50 that. millions. Like Because it's yeah. like, you know... And, even when you buy like a player and you think, okay, here's a star, like Pogba, for example. I know we've all moved on from him, but just, just quickly. Mm-hmm. Here's a star. It's like we buy him, you don't know what to do with him. And then we have these six years of, you know, drama. Flim flam. Like Lukaku. You know, he's a player who he plays yeah. a certain way. Here's how you get the best out of him. Da, da, da. And then, you know, it, it, it doesn't work out. And you end up just getting rid of him. Sanchez, same as. Mm. Di Maria. Buying him and playing him in as a striker. It's insane. At least the one good thing about San Ivan, these players that we've been linked with or that we've bought, is he knows them. Yeah, at least he's not being them. forced on him. Um, go on then, give us your wally of the week. Uh, it's got to be the weather here. <laughs> I love that. It's got to be. We yeah. came to Australia, <laughs> one of the no- most notoriously hot countries. Notorious. Like nothing, you've seen roads with like that shimmering kind of heat wave over it. That is the, in the mind of Australia, isn't it, when you think about it? And then you get here, yeah, and I it we is. we were going to be like in between us. Yeah, dying. or round the twist. Right. Please, it's eight please degrees. In my it's, it that, is, but then you get clipped off and you fucked it, mate. It's literally <laughs> 30 <laughs> degrees colder here than it that's, is in England. Yeah, that little clip. <laughs> it's 30 degrees colder here than it is in England. 30 degrees, that's 30 insane. 30 degrees colder. Like, yeah. it's 30 degrees is hot. Yeah. And it's 30 degrees hotter than it is here I- I- in England. So yeah. I won't want it to be that hot either. Oh, yeah. Because okay, okay. especially in England, there's no air con. But yeah. come on, give us a 20. I haven't seen the sun since we left England. Not that I'm complaining, it's been it's a amazing. Howler, it? But yeah, come on. Heat wise, give us a I'm glad I'm not at home in that heat. Yeah, me too. It's just Imagine just that. The houses. It's so warm for me. It's warm and it's warm. Hey. Sweating cobs Sat here. here. <laughs> oh. Go on, who's your Wally of the Week, my friend? His one's a good shout with the weather. Yeah. I, I like that shout. It's a good shout, that. Um, People saying it's winter. I know it's winter. I'm being semi facetious with that. For the purposes I haven't of seen a spider. Yeah. No. Well, one, one of the things I heard was, the day. don't nice. go to, don't go to Australia and loads of spiders and that. I haven't seen one. Is that because we're in the, the city? Week? Spiders. No, no, or no. the no. lack of spiders. <laughs> <laughs> the no, absence no. of spiders. That's no. the most bizarre one of the week we've ever had. You know, because we've been away. Yeah. On holiday, working. It's not on holiday, as I tell my missus. It's work. Work. Hard work. Grafted. Graft. Yeah, graft. I haven't really paid attention to anything. 
Anything. Like, you know, like, where were you'd pick a Wally of the Week? I haven't no, paid attention no. to none of that stuff. Oh, well, Jay's got about eight from this Conservative leadership campaign he's going to whip out in a minute, so <laughs> don't worry, he's got plenty for you. <laughs> Jay, come on, how many have you got? I don't like to be political, but... Not to be political. Sunak. Truss. No. He's yeah, named yeah. both. Sunak the seller. Right, they're both shits out from this oh, debate. Sure. Them. It actually is them. We might have another debate, but we're not going to turn up because we're both a pair of bellends. We've just embarrassed each other. Oh, but we want to leave the country and go up against Putin. Yeah, good luck with that one. <laughs> so them nanas can go in there. Does it worry that Rishi Sunak's five foot three? If we, talk about, if we can talk about Martin as his height, surely. An Etonian who's just completely devoid of any understanding of what people are actually going through. We say that, Jay, but he's got you know upper class friends. He's got middle class friends. He's got working class friends. Well, he's not got working class friends. I'm not working class friends. I've got friends that know working class people. Yeah, I've got friends that have employed working yeah. class people. So I'm qu- equipped to tell you how to manage yeah. your bills. Yeah, how can I hate working class people? I Rishi Sunak, so. sock your mother. Thank you. See? Debate. I'm pretty brutal. Sock your mother too. See? This is a better debate than you get when I'm sorry. It's better, isn't it? Um, <laughs> Adam, Adam McCullough will be the moderator on the next debate. Yeah, can you imagine? <laughs> That's the first one where the debate Just moderator like gets arrested during <laughs> the debate. Just shaking your energy. Security walking. coming escorting from the building to the police who are waiting outside. Grass, <laughs> yeah, grass, yeah, grass, grass. Right, we can stay. Grass, 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 grass. Fucking grass. <laughs> grass, grass, grass. <laughs> um, I think that's it then. Yeah. Thanks to everyone who got involved in the chat and the comments as well. Thanks to Manscaped for sponsoring. Don't forget as well to go and check out all the other vids and the vlogs we've had from the tour. We've been all over this. We're going to be in Perth as well. We're going to be in Norway. We're going to be back at Old Trafford for those games as well. So make sure you're checking out all that stuff. And don't forget as well to hit subscribe. We've got over 650 thousand subscribers now we appreciate all the support we've got we've seen it first and we see it all the time um so big love to all you guys and shout out to manscaped as well for sponsoring this video you know where to find adam mccall go and check out adam mccall tv he's got some cracking guests on there this week oh yeah me and joe smith uh joe smith bit of a sabbatical from sloppy joe's but it's back soon no it's it's been going out as, as per regular programming oh well there you go Let's check out sloppy joe's podcast and you know where Jay. to find me as well doing my scotty much stuff that'll be going out on thursday this has been the paddock podcast thanks for watching bye